Sunday, which no one's ever heard of, uh, but Billy Wilder and Kurt Siadmak made that back in the 30s, uh, before they escaped Nazi Germany. So they showed that film, and they were like, go, just make some stuff. And so we, uh, so there's no prior, like I didn't know what story we were going to make, so we just basically went around the city, and uh, I kind of made a, made a story that kind of a lot of people are connected to. And I didn't want to make one story that was 13 minutes long, I wanted to make three little ones. And uh, it's very slacker-esque, because I was, I'm very affected by Texas filmmakers, and so yeah, being a Texas filmmaker in Germany, I was like, well, you know, let's, let's do this, uh, you know. So uh, it worked out pretty well, and and we wrote it in English, and then we translated it to German, and yeah, they did they did really great. Um, uh, another bullet dodge was kind of a, a direct response to a short that I made a couple of years ago called Delmer Builds a Machine that that played here and, and some other places, and that was a two and a half minute, very quick three gag uh, comedy. 
Um, and I just, it was one of those things that as I watched it play, I noticed that it was either you laughed in certain places or you didn't, and then it worked or it didn't. And I, I was started to get much more interested in trying to explore the idea of um, the way audiences interact with, uh, with, with something that you make. So I was really trying to make something that uh, the, would say more about each viewer who watched it than it would about the film itself based on anyone's individual reaction. Um, and so that, that sort of was the main guideline uh, going into it. And I know I really wanted to do something that worked, uh, relied on actors and that was set in a contemporary setting and that had to deal with um, uh, just honestly portraying the way that people can behave towards one another. Um, in a way that may be unpleasant, but at least uh, would be meaningful to me. So that's sort of where things started steamrolling from there. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, this was for the NYU grad film thesis that Ian did. Ian's Trinidadian, so he just wanted to shoot something in his local um, town. He's also Canadian, so he thought if he went back to his local country, he could execute something similar to what you're saying, Landon. It's like with local actors, just do something like really on the low and see where it goes, because that's, Ian also teaches at NYU, I think he's seen just a ton of shorts over the last six years or whatever amount of time he's been, he's been teaching there, so he, um, I think he saw what works in shorts, which is, you know, the performances, and that's, you know, what he wanted to do is structure something around good actors, so I think he's doing a good job. My, my three uncles had set fire to my grandfather's Jeep in the front yard when they were real little, and so um, the story goes that he dragged each one of them in for their punishment, and it didn't come out till they were adults, like what actually happened in there, because they weren't allowed to say like what happened. Um, and so I just, I love that nugget of a story, and thought it was just so full of drama, and um, yeah, and that's all. That's Um, I think the, <laughs> I think uh, the story for this one was inspired. Todd uh, Todd has one brother, and uh, and I have one brother. And Alex, his his co-writer and actor, has one brother. And I think exploring that relationship that can exist when you have two boys in the family, <laughs> the love hate uh, dynamic that can happen between them. And uh, well, in my case, it's always uh, stuck me the 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 fact that. Some people have like a really odd jobs and kind of a lonely jobs or isolated jobs. So that's where how I, I got inspired by this, this story about this, this guy, the lonely guy. Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I was just me, but why did he wear a size five? <laughs> Why did you wear a size small? Or size shoe small? Uh, small? Well, <laughs> I think it's the uh, this guy has like a really flat life with like emotionless life. So I think it's the, the only emotion he has in in his life. The, I mean, the, the the reason to live for. I mean, this guy doesn't have any any family or any friends or. So, it's basically, that's kind of metaphor. <laughs> it, totally off the wall sort of thing, but the umbrella to the head thing. Did that just <laughs> spontaneously come to you? Um, that was, uh, Todd wrote that into the script, and I don't really know uh, where that came from. It probably came from... A, from something that he actually did, or that his brother did to him, or one or the other. Also, Todd and Alex, who co-wrote this, have a very brotherly relationship, and they're always doing stuff like that to each other, so I would imagine that came out of real life. What the hell is that gigantic burger? Man, that was a real, okay, good question. That was a real, so we got to this diner, this is in Branson, Missouri, and we ordered, like, one of the other producers got there first, and we were, I was like, hey, just order us all food, and we'll eat lunch when we get there, and then we'll shoot this scene. So we ordered a bunch of different stuff off the menu. And we got there, and he had just picked, he was like, let me get four burgers and like four chicken sandwiches and different things. And that was just a menu item. It was this pork, uh, uh, like pork loin sandwich. And so he just ordered it as amongst the stuff. And when we got there and we saw the food, we were like, oh my god, we have to use this in the scene. So we didn't let anyone eat it. And we like set it aside and saved it. So we started cheating. 
And then we ordered other stuff from them. We were like, can we just get a bunch of pies and other things so we could have a lot to eat in that scene? And uh, Alex, of course, as he usually does, went ahead and ate lunch. And then we shot that scene where he kept having to eat the whole time. It was crazy. But yeah, that was a real, we didn't plan on that. That was just a real sandwich they served there. Anybody have any other questions? Yeah, Jeff. Yeah. Um, so you guys have two questions. Uh, one for you. Are, are you the actor in the movie as well? In your short? Yes, you, so you in the green jacket. No, I am the actor, though. Oh. And then for you, ma'am, um, was it the case that in all of the little boys he did not, you know, he he did that, or I leave that up to you guys. Like I know when we, the actors know what happened and how we played it, and um, I know and my uncles know, but I, I leave that up to you guys. But what I really enjoy is the complexity of that father character a lot. Did anybody ever get, really get taped to the wall? <laughs> no, that's from my head. That was a really, that, we were talking about that yesterday. It was a really fun um, scene to execute, and we had to do it twice because we lost light the first time. And I was, like yesterday I was saying, our uh, actress uh, wasn't able to make it to set, and so we had to steal our AD, our assistant director, and tape her up on the side of the wall. <laughs> yeah. Such a great visual. <laughs> I think we have time for one more question. If anybody wants to go? Yeah, the uh, the chugging scene was that ad lib or written in the, in uh, Alonzo Morning? Um, no, that was very very scripted, and we we actually did that whole thing like four times. So <laughs> we had to, we had towels everywhere on the floor, and we had set everything, and then every take we'd have to kind of clean all that up and put new towels down and change their shirts and reset everything so that they could do. <laughs> Just to go ahead and kind of end it, um, why don't we go down the line and talk about what you guys are working on next, just to give them okay. an idea. Well, I, I just finished the, the screen, the screenwriting for the, my first feature, and I'm going to start looking for, for fonts, and hopefully by the end of this year, or maybe next year, I start shooting. Hmm. Uh, we're working on trying to, to make the feature version that of this short that Todd actually wrote before we made the short, so hopefully that will all come together. Great. Um, uh, I'm, I'm a little busy. We, I, I'm finishing a couple of shorts that I've shot throughout uh, my time at, at UCLA. There's one is a love story in a gun range that we're finishing up, and then um, I'm shooting UCLA's first live action 3D film, which is going to be really interesting. And then, and then we got a couple features that we're uh, putting in development after uh, we finish the school. So. Um, I, I, I just did this, uh, just shot this short for a, a, a transmedia company that I'm really curious to see how that's going to turn out, where you use uh, phone and email technology in conjunction with uh, uh, web series. Learn how to make a difference and celebrate the earth <laughs> at Crypto Day Dallas 2012. This is part of the Q&A and Admission is free with something for everyone. Hundreds of eco-exhibitors. Live entertainment sponsored by Live... <laughs> So it, it, Everybody's it, 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 like, I don't know, I gotta go to the bathroom, man. <laughs> uh, then, um, uh, I'm curious to see how that turns out. Uh, and then I've got uh, two more uh, shorts I'm working on. <laughs> Mine just premiered just now. I don't know. It's just an audio experience. But I'm glad you all enjoyed it. We're going to work on a couple of things, and I have a couple of features that we just have been waiting to get out there. So you know, I'm trying to get that done, and maybe be here next year with them. Um, we're developing a feature version of Hallian that we're in the middle of like fourth or fifth draft of. So hopefully we'll be shooting that this time next year. And then we're doing a short again this summer about a, a death metal. Well, thank y'all for coming out. I hope you guys are super awesome.